Big crowds of strangers or small crowds of friends. No matter how I choose to remember those days when I would rub shoulders with fellow fireworks fans or toast a birthday with my meetup group, I miss them more than I thought I would. And while last summer allowed a chance to have small get-togethers in the park, this past winter has felt cold and filled with the chill of isolation. While for the rest of Canada, winter conjures up an image of white streets and sub-zero temperatures, here in what I call the banana belt of Canada, it was a different story. New Westminster, like most of southern BC, can be counted on to deliver a host of sodden gray skies and endless dreary days every winter and spring. Having a pandemic doesn't change that. Sometimes it can be punctuated with the occasional brilliance of a sunny day. As anyone knows who lives in this part of the country, any day it isn't raining is a beautiful day. But the pandemic has made this past winter feel different. The weather is the same, but January lost the afterglow of post-holiday cheer. February was brutal and March felt like a promise revoked. Can April deliver relief? Most of us spent the winter holidays on our own, as I did, with a very limited family, unless you were a politician, of course. Then you jetted off to some Caribbean island or Hawaii to escape the howls of winter winds. We all thought that once we were past 2020, it would feel different, feel safer somehow. After all, the vaccine is on its way, right? Plans were in place, priorities named, we could all heave a sigh of relief. And then with the trouble down south, we all began to worry. We had our problems to deal with, our own pandemic to battle. We felt a bit smug through it all. After all, we are those practical Canadians. We had our act together, right? Then I read of shortages changing the timing between first and second shots. Will we even have enough? The shortages continue, plus new variants are spreading across the country. A chill begins to cover my heart, and I wonder if this is it. Did we finally find a way to end it for the human race, and it isn't because of global warming? So I calmed down, and I looked back at all we had come through this past year. I began to talk with a few folks about it. Of course, this all begins with whatever path we've traveled to even get here to New West. Like everything, the route to here and now was different for each person I talked to. Well, during the Vietnam War, um, I, I was a child, and I remember you know, how our family got together every time there's a siren happening, uh, huddled together in the bomb shelter. And, and those feelings were very, very familiar with me every time I hear any news about the, the pandemic. All of the news and that collective unknown is what I, I remember. So I would talk to my family, and it's amazing what the body remembers. So I reached out to my family, and it's not the origin of the pandemic, the virus is not what I care about, but it's that emotional response to the collective unknown. So how do you prepare for the collective unknown? Uh, so I've been tattooing like around eight years. I moved a lot in Canada. I came from Japan. I lived in Toronto, like total like three years, and the Yukon three years, and moved a lot. and then see the world a lot. And then I walked at lots of tattoo shops and then I decided, finally I decided to open the, my own. And then this happened. So like, it was really hard. Like definitely I worried because like, uh, especially like after open. Sorry, I used to be in the lab field for like, I was a supervisor um, in that field for about 15 years. And then, to make a long story short, I was getting a little bit unhappy and I very much believe one life, make it a good one. So I took a huge chance and I left that career and became a flight attendant. So I had been working uh, for about three and a half years at the time and was loving like every single day, like work. I'm like, yes, like, I'm excited to go. And that's the goal, right? When you can say, yeah, 
you know, you wake up and it's like, oh, I'm so excited to go to work. Like that's everyone's goal is to love your job, right? So I was there and I was so happy. And then, um, so a few months, like starting December, I had been only doing Hawaii flights. So every week I was enjoying the sunshine and it was amazing. And then it was supposed to go until about May, but then it got halted obviously when the pandemic hit around in March. So I had done a couple of flights. We had brought some people back and you could just tell like, you know, the flights on the way down were quite empty, but on the way home, they were full, full, full. Of course, we know and understand so much more about this virus compared to last year at this time. Again, I saw what I had faced then and am facing now is little in comparison to what some others I've talked to went through, especially on the day they announced the pandemic. I mean, at that time, I, I, the only thing that I, was, I thought of at the time is that I, I remember it as something big was going to happen. I just didn't know how big it was. Uh, open a couple of months later, we got the pandemic, so it was really hard because I saved up lots of money for the opening of the shop and um, then hit, then this is happens. So it was really hard uh, mentally too. Definitely I worried because like, uh, especially like after open it, then yeah, I'm gonna try to money, get money back like whatever I spent for the shop and then this happened. So like you could see the fear in their eyes and you could see, you know, is it safe to fly? And they were asking us and everyone's bringing like loads of like wipes and wiping down the whole plane. And I was like, our planes have never been cleaner. Thanks to you guys. <laughs> Cause you know, everybody was there cleaning their own spaces and the chairs and the front screens, like everything. So um, you know, at first I was like, well, everyone's going to come home and, you know, this will probably be a few, maybe a couple of weeks at best. And, and then I'll get back to doing what I do. And I had a mo the month of May off originally. So I was like, well, I'll just, you know, forget to go on my vacation in May and do <laughs> kind of what I want to do. And then, um, my last flight was April the 2nd, and that was a repatriation flight from Peru. So we flew out to Toronto. And then we flew out to Peru from Toronto. Um, maybe I want to say there was like maybe five people on the flight out and about 450 on the way home. And they had done a bunch of these flights to get people home. Um, so I'm glad, I'm grateful that my last flight so far, not my last flight ever, hopefully, <laughs> um, was doing something good, you know, like uh, bringing people home. As we creep through this past year of isolation, We've discovered hidden truths and unexpected pleasures. I love my solitary walks along the Brunette River. I'm surprised to find I've become obsessed with an online game where I solve murder mysteries. For others, it might be a rekindled love of cooking or learning to paddleboard or even really getting into that icon of artistry, Bob Ross. We've all gotten better at finding new ways to get through this pandemic. It, I started kind of at a standstill and not knowing what I wanted to do and anything like that. So during it, I had time, which I've had time, but it was usually kind of planning out my next destination or where I was going next. So um, I live uh, close to a nice kind of park by the river, like type of thing. So going out there and fresh air was important and getting um, outside. I also um, have a paddleboard now, which uh, really helped because, you know, it's isolating. I'm out on the water pretty much by myself or with one friend and we're on our own beach paddleboard and it's quiet out there, which was nice, like with that peace and tranquility that I guess, like, even though it's everyone has some sort of quiet time, I wouldn't say I was at peace. So that was, that was really helpful with that. And prior to, it was like always on the go on a plane and, you know, not really cooking a lot because I was just always on the go. So cooking chilies and soups and things I can kind of freeze part of it. Um, and then probably the third was my parents, uh, you know, they're elderly and each one lives alone. So trying to be there for them as well. So they don't 
lose their minds being alone, especially, I know my dad was used to being very, very social and um, going to care homes and volunteering there, which all of that came to a complete halt right away. So he really hasn't seen anyone at all. So I've just tried to be there for them too, right? Because this is really hard on the elderly as well. My problem was like, I don't know how to balance. So it was a take a break. Like I don't know how to take a rest. So that's, I learned a lot from this during the lockdown, like make sure I take my time, like relax, uh, self-care. That's so important. I think everybody, like all the humans, we needed to self-care. Uh, so like as an artist, like I said before too, is like, I think that it doesn't ever stop learning, like anything, like even just pencil drawing, like there's so many way to do and you can always try new tricks or anything. So like, for example, like Bob Ross, like I love Bob Ross and his mentality is awesome. And I, I didn't do it during the lockdown, it was a Bob Ross, but sometimes I do watch Bob Ross and like really s set up the, all the canvas and like completely the same kind of uh, environment with him and really watching Bob Ross and stop and trying to use uh, his techniques. Well, one thing that was unexpected that continuing to, to like have, have, you know, amazing present discovery around prior to the pandemic, discovered this group of women uh, online giving cooking lessons in my own kitchen. The, these delightful women that I met online and before the pandemic, I, I, it was just in the fall, I hosted one, one lunch, actually, um, just got acquainted with them at home. And I was about to start hosting at home. I was just an introductory host. And then when, when I was about to for, for a fee, and then the pandemic hit, I was just devastated. It, it was just like, it just couldn't, couldn't happen. But then we decided to let's just pivot and take this online. And, and it took a while for, for the pivot to actually happen. But then what happened was it, it took off. It happened to take off. And now it took on a whole life of its own. A few months into it, now we have people that signed up because they couldn't get together with their family from other cities. So one time we had this family that wanted to connect with their siblings in Calgary and Winnipeg. So they signed up for my cooking class because they want to learn their favorite dish that they all used to enjoy in the Vietnamese restaurant. And so they want to make that dish together. So they signed up to learn how to make this dish in my class with their dad and their sister. So they all got the same groceries uh, to learn how to make it. And they signed up for my class to connect it with the siblings over three different cities and just to connect over my class over a Sunday afternoon. So this is something that could never happen in real life you know, in my kitchen. That was just something that is so unexpected, so delightful. But a year of isolation and uncertainty can also bring growth. We look for joy and maybe even peace in unexpected places. Some of us learn new skills or rediscover those closest to us. I found time to bake, to explore my neighborhood, and we've all learned the skill of Zooming. Canceled travel times might mean more time spent with friends or getting through that long list of books you promised to read. Whatever we have gained from renewed relationships to new skills, these are the silver lining most of us were not expecting to find during our year of pandemic isolation. I think this pandemic like really realized some people opened their eyes and I'm the one too that is like see things differently. Like this is a great time to do something and something new. So just keep positive and I think just keep like trying to something new, uh, learning something. Then like after pandemic is done and like we grow up, like we're gonna level up. You know, I, I've tried my whole life never to take things for granted or, you know, think that something's gonna last forever, but 
but clearly none of us, no one was expecting anything like this. So like I said, like I've met some amazing people at, at my new work and, you know, I couldn't ask for anything better. And as, as far as being um, an extrovert, I get to do that there because we're constantly seeing new people. Um, you know, I met a whole great group of people I get to work with. Um, it's, it's constantly being able to be somewhat social at work, which has really helped me. But I think, again, not really ever taking things for granted before I'm really not <laughs> taking anything for granted and every day I was so excited to be at work before and I'm finding those in my job now and hopeful that I'll be able to do both in the future. One thing that I realized be between my partner and I is that we've been together close to 30 years. We, we pretty much grew up together because we were pretty much we were very close in age and one thing that is really, really neat is that we're, we're not afraid of change. And I think this pandemic has, has given us that opportunity. In the last 30 years, I think this is the most time that we spend together on a 24-hour cycle, you know, in a day-to-day -day in the last year. We never have this much time together in a 24-hour day. Uh, other than, you know, vacation. But on vacation, you usually have a couple of weeks and that's it. But to spend almost a year where you're asleep or awake, you're together, right? Day after day after day. So what ha has given us hope is that at the end of the day, we still want to be together. We just look at each other and we just have one of those profound moments where we say to each other, you know, change never happened at a time when the war is static, never. You know, if we've survived through this length of time already, you know, bring it on. <laughs> so with a year behind us and more changes ahead, bring on the hope and the fear both. We can make it through them. Still, while my own hope sits next to my fears, postcards from old memories continue to bring me joy. I hope that you find your joy as we move out of this holding pattern and into new beginnings. Peace.